Hey, shit, Andy, you see that stop sign up ahead, though? Come on, just slow this car down. Dude, no brake! What? Are you kidding? No Shut up. Are you serious? Dude, Dude. Let's go! Hang on, guys. at all times. You never give up. Ever. You believe. Gibsonburg, Ohio. Home to about 2,000 good, down-to-earth, hard-working people. The recession hit these parts pretty hard. You never know it since we keep our heads high, but they were hurting bad. The town didn't have too much to hope for. It didn't really have anything to believe in. But these four guys were about to change everything. Andy Gruner. I have a feeling that if it wasn't for him, there wouldn't be much story to tell you right now. Natural born leader and captain of the baseball team. His family ran and owned the famous Sadio Bakery in downtown Gibsonburg. but to shut down at the end of May so they can put everything up in a sheriff's sale. Hey. <laughs> Looks good. Thanks. You're all set for morning rush. I gotta get going to school. I love you, son. Love you, too. Hey, Andy, the principal really wants you to try and help us stop some new skip day this year. He thinks the students will listen to you. I don't think they're going to listen to me as much as he thinks. Hey, Andy. Hey, when you have a minute, here, uh, we need to talk about the plans we have for the baseball coach. I'm 15 minutes late for a meeting. Can we talk after the lunch? Sure. Head coach Kyle Race. I like coaching baseball. It's like more of a player than a coach. Tell me about it. You guys are gonna like playing for me. I got two rules. Rule number one, you never give up, ever. Rule number two, you gotta believe. You gotta believe in yourself, and you gotta believe in your teammates at all times. All right, that's all I gotta say. Let's go, hustle up, let's go take some BP, come on. You know the team better than I do. How do you think we'll do this season? Are you a religious man, coach? A little bit, why? Oh. Ooh. Ah. 
Ah. Well, I'd pray. Now they were all pretty good guys, but like anyone else, they loved a good party. And they were always the life of it. <laughs> it's like he's gonna have a baby in here. You know the type you can rest a cup of coffee on? Yeah. I know the type, my man. <laughs> nice. I mean, five bucks. Max back. I'm out, Top Gun. You're crazy, brother. I'm out. Dude, he was on the sick hand. I'm gone. What do you got, Chris Moneymaker? Check it out. Royal flush. I'm <laughs> That's $9 pot, Andy. You Cash. always do seem to get the lucky breaks. You're on a roll, big guy. Might be time to ask Kathy out. Do it, man. She's got a boyfriend. Are you kidding me, Steve? He is such a douchebag. That will never last. close friends since third grade. It was no secret that Andy had a lot of feelings for Kathy. I'm a little tired. I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. All right, All fellas. Right. I got two rules. Rule number Rule one. one. You never, never give up. Have. Ever. Ever. Rule, Rule number two, two. you got to believe. believe. You got to believe in yourself, yourself and your teammates teammate. at all times. 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 What's up, Debbie Downer? You need some coffee for your stakeout mission? <laughs> what? Why are you still here? Just a lot on my mind right now. Dude, just tell me, man. Just tell me. What's up? I don't know, man. You remember my dad's old Chevelle? <laughs> yeah. He used to just put us in the back seat. We'd go out and just fly down all those back roads. Hey, didn't he sell that to that mechanic dude on State Street or something like that? Yeah. Henry Tillman. He drives it around town all the time. <laughs> I thought I was going to get it someday, but uh, my dad ended up selling it because I ran into some money troubles. What money problems? What are you talking about? I wasn't going to say anything, but uh, uh, we're losing the bakery. What? I guess my parents have been fighting off the creditors, but even now, after selling everything, we still end up like $90,000, I think we owe. Man, I, I had no idea. No one does. So, let's just keep it that way, okay? Of course, dude. I mean, I'm not the best at giving advice, but, you know, everything always works out, so just don't worry about it. But, hey, I'll see you at the game tomorrow, man. He'll cheer up once you see this uh, old stud give a pitching clinic tomorrow. <laughs> All right, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Later.
All right, fellas, listen up. We're three and zero after today's win. Frank, let's stop by the McDonald's off the road to celebrate. Yeah. And that right there was pretty much the highlight of the season. Things went from bad to worse. Way worse. It was a house of cards. Once the first one went, the rest followed. Are you serious? It's first base. It was contagious. All of a sudden, it was like the whole team was allergic to just catching a baseball. Are you kidding me? Put one of my strikes on. And hitting one. Hey, Coach Race, we've lost 12 games in a row. Do you still think we should be playing the same nine people? Pitcher in the state. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Pincus. Looked like he should have been in the majors, and he pitched like it too. Now, some people have nightmares about, well, I don't know, fears, death, or pain, what have you. But people around here have nightmares about this woman. If you can call her that. Pegasus' mother. Hey, hit her! Why don't you sit down now, huh? You're terrible! My Tyler could strike you up, pitching left-handed! Only 12 strikeouts against that lousy team? Come on, Ty! You can do better than that! We gotta go all the way to the top. Come on, baby. No, you and me. No. We were just waiting for someone to pour water on her so we could all watch her melt. Guys, they haven't seen an inning all season. <laughs> Sanchez, man. Two games left and he hasn't played all year. Yeah. Still works pretty hard, though. I always thought the worst thing I put myself through was watching Tom Brinker's dad take one of his cows to slaughter. But now if I had to choose between that and watching some of those games again, I think you know where I'm going with that. Andy, I need to talk with you. Andy? Andy? I'm afraid I have bad news. The bakery's been having some financial trouble, and your father and I have been working really hard to resolve it, but... But what? Honey, at the end of May, we're gonna have to close down. The creditors will take it from there, and your dad's looking for a new job, and we're gonna live with your aunt for a little while up in Pemberville. Isn't there anything I can do? Oh. I wish there was, honey. Okay, Mom. Hey, don't worry. We never give up, right?
Hey, what's up? Not much. Do you want an eclair? I sure do. These are the best eclairs ever. Something wrong? No, nothing at all. Do you mind if I vent a little to you? Sure. school. I'm so tired of everyone that keeps telling me these are the best times of my life. These times suck. I just can't wait until school's over and I'm out of here. I'm so tired of all the work from the teachers. They're so unfair. And I hate not knowing about getting into college. That is about killing me. And I just hate not having any good friends. Hey. I'll always be here. I know. You've always been so sweet. Hey, I'm sorry for just talking about me. How's everything with you? Uh, I'm all good. Frickin' just lost 17 to zero. I'll tell you what. No more practice between now and our first tournament game. We're all just a little spent. Bus leaves at 3 p.m. on Friday for our first sectional game against Bettsville. Don't be late. Thank you for getting all the bread deliveries taken care of, honey. No problem, Mom. Do you mind locking up? Not at all. Oh, don't worry, Andy. Things always have a way of working themselves out. Oh, oh, and before you leave, would you mind getting started on the sheriff's sale? Your dad wants you to bring up all of those old boxes full of stuff from the crawl space. Do you mind? I'll take care of it. Thanks.
What's up with you, man? Nothing really. Dude, just think. Seven more wins, state champs. Yeah. Don't be like that. Sure nothing else is up? Yeah, I'm good. All right. Nice pitching today. 12 strikeouts. Whoa, whoa. I think you mean 13 strikeouts. <laughs> Whatever. Still look good. Thanks, man. I'm surprised to say the whole team looked good. I don't even think we had any errors, knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you still going by Millicent's tonight? Of course, dude. I'm very happy that the president of your local bank directed you our way. We examine the coins. If I were you, I would put them in a very safe place. Really? Most of the coins are rare and would easily get you 120000 if you wanted to sell. <laughs> However, one of the coins is a 1913 Liberty Head nickel. There are only five of them minted secretly in the Philadelphia Mint. An eccentric man named Samuel Brown bought all five of them in 1913 for $50,000. What happened to the coins? Rumor has it that 20 years later in 1933, Samuel Brown found out that he was dying. He traveled around the country handing them out like regular nickels. He gave them to people that touched his soul or for some reason he deemed special. The only thing he'd say is, I'd hang on to that one if I were you. Hmm. Well, over the years, four of the five have been recovered. Last year, the fourth coin sold at Sotheby's auction for $12 million. Everybody assumed that the fifth coin was lost forever. You have the fifth coin. We estimate its value to be between 16 and 20 million dollars. Can you tell me how long it would take you to broker these coins except for the 1913 Liberty Head Nickel? That's an easy one. Our firm will purchase the coins and we'll get you a check in three to five days. Okay, uh, we'll hold on to the 1913 Liberty Head nickel and we'll put that in a safe place and we'll, until we decide what we want to do with it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm very happy for you. Thank you. <laughs> it's just like Coach said, never give up. Ever. He also said we should believe. That's what he said, huh? Dad, what's wrong? This is great news for us. Andy, let me tell you a story that my dad told me just before he died. Let's head outside. I'll tell you all about it. A long time ago, a man walked into the bakery. This was when your great-grandfather and his two brothers owned the bakery. Well, all your great-grandfather and his brothers did was spend a little time with the man. They listened to him. And this man gave the three of them an old box of coins. He pulled out one coin and made a point to say, I'd hang on to that one if I were you. Back then, that one coin was worth a lot of money. I think this was the year 1933, a few years after the stock market crashed. Well. These three brothers, who were the best of friends as well, well, they were torn apart once they got the coin. For the first time in their lives, all three brothers were fighting with each other. The stress caused one of Grandpa's brothers to have a heart attack. The other brother was killed in an accident. Once money entered the picture, everything collapsed like a cheap house of cards. I 
never really saw the point. In fact, to be honest, I, I never really believed it. Dad's dementia was pretty bad at the time. What do you think we should do, Dad? You don't actually think that... Think what, Andy? That the coins, you know, are kind of cursed. I don't know what I think about that stuff, son. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to take that box and I want you to put it right back where you got it. Nobody goes into the basement of the bakery anyway, so it'll be safer there than any safe deposit box or bank. Okay. And another thing. Let's let's just keep this real quiet. Well, looks like our season continues. I know. I thought the torture was over after going six and seventeen. Really, yeah. I don't even understand how we're getting past Saint Joe. We haven't even beaten them since third grade. I know. Freaking Pincus. Someone said he's throwing in the mid nineties. I heard he got a full ride to Eastern Michigan. As much as I hate him, he is good. Big deal. We'll still rock him if we play him. Seriously. What's up, guys? Hey, Kathy. No entourage tonight? No, it's just me. Andy, thanks for the other day. No big deal. Hey, it's a little crowded in here. You want to grab some fresh air? Sure. Hey, it's Steve. I'm going to take this call and then we can talk. What's up, babe? Not much. Just hanging out with everyone at Wes's. Wes's? That's interesting. What do you mean? Uh, hey, hey. Tomorrow's Saturday. Why, why don't you just drive down to Columbus and come see me, huh? Exams are coming up. That might be pretty tough. <laughs> Listen, just, just do me this favor. Wes's parents, they got a liquor cabinet fully stocked, all right? How do you know this? Let's just say I paid a visitor to her in high school. Steve? <laughs> Let's just get on out there. Nobody will even notice. Grab me a bottle, Jack. Oh, grab me a bottle of Absolute, too. Bring it when you come see me. Nobody will even miss it, trust me. No way, Steve. I'm not going to steal from you. Plus, I have to study tomorrow. Thanks a lot. You know, I'm, I'm really getting sick and tired of this high school bullshit. Steve. Why are you talking to me like this? Hey, I, I gotta run. Thanks for nothing. Steve. Steve. <laughs> Looks like you could use a drink. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I'm such a loser. I don't really like the friends I've been hanging around. Steve has been acting like a real jerk lately. And then this morning, I backed into my dad's car. I can relate to that. I just don't like the senior year of high school at all. And guess what? What? I just heard from Northwestern that I didn't get in. I'm sorry. I better get going. Hey, good 
luck studying tomorrow. Andy, thanks for being such a good friend. Kathy, what, what's up? What are you doing in bed so late? Hey, I felt bad about our conversation last night and wanted to bring you a peace offering. You brought the liquor? Well, no. <laughs> Me and my mom baked you some of our world-famous chocolate chip cookies. And I brought you your favorite drink, a big giant Slurpee. I just got it. But yeah, put them on the desk. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Enjoy your cookies. Here you go, Jamie. All right, thank you. Thank you, guys. Have Bye. a great night. Bye. Thank you. Hey, Andy. Hey there. What you doing? Just closing up. Oh. I got a text from Wes. Says you and Steve broke up. Wes is such a gossip. <laughs> but yeah, he's right on that one. How you doing? Kinda bummed, actually. Not at all about Steve. I came to learn he was just a big jerk. Just a lot of things. Hey, how about hanging out with an old friend tonight? That sounds great. I'll just call Alex and see what he's doing. It's very funny. <laughs> Actually, I have to work late tonight. Could we hang out tomorrow? I get off work early and could be at your place by seven. That sounds great. See you then. Can I ask you a question? Sure. If you have a situation and you really don't know what to do, what's the best way to decide? I don't know. I would say just follow your heart and it'll be hard to go wrong. I understand more than you can imagine. Sports fans, Andy Gruner, captain of the Gibsonburg baseball team, 
is supposedly up for any and all challenges. So what's this? A little country girl challenges Andy to a race to the dock. Will he accept? Can he win? Can he catch the speedy Kathy? Very funny. And they're off. No wonder they went six and 17. Bruner runs like a turtle. <laughs> farm has a lot of beautiful views, doesn't it? They're amazing. Everybody bring it in. Forget what happened in the past, boys. This day, this day's a new day. It's our day! And you better believe, we're not just coming for them, no. Hell no! We're coming for everybody! Everybody! All right, Bears, let's bring it in. One, Hammer. two, yeah. three, uh. who are we? Gibsonburg! We! Gibsonburg! Let's go!
And just like that, the team won five tournament games in a row. One more win and Gibsonburg was in the final four. The only thing that stood in the way was St. Joe and Tyler Pincus. We almost there. Yes, we're almost there. Come on, where are you taking me? I would just call it my special place. It's where I go to think. I've been coming here since I was really little. But why is it so far away? Okay, here we are. Stand right. Right. Uh... There. Perfect. Oh, wow. Wasn't it worth the walk? This is amazing. Thank you. It's beautiful. Yeah. It is. If you were to walk out on a beach at any given time, the water will be moving one of two ways. And when we walked into this story, it was surely moving one particular way. But you know, the thing about the tide is, eventually, it changes. Even after everything that happened up to this point, no one was all that confident about facing Tyler Pincus and Fremont St. Joe again. You know, I don't think they have a chance today. Yeah, I know. But at least we'll get to see Pincus. My dad says that in a couple of years, we'll get to see him pitching in the bigs. Cool. It was a well-known fact that no one hated going against Pincus more than Wyatt. For some reason, ever since they were little kids, Pink has had it in for Wyatt. And he gunned for him every single time.
for this. Now up until this point, Wyatt Kaiser had never hit a home run in his entire life. I think about it and I still just shake my head. But the game had only just started. For four more innings, Pincus did nothing but rattle up strikeout, after strikeout, after strikeout. Let's go, let's go, we got one out. Lou, you gotta be kidding me! Are you serious? You gotta throw him out of the game! Get 
Could you not hear me? Throw him out of the game! Be these guys? <laughs> nope. I don't think we ever have. This would be a pretty good game to win. <sighs> yeah. It would. Except. I've never even hit a foul ball off Pinkus. Just make contact, man. It'll go. Just make contact, huh? Just make contact. Andy, I don't know what to say. You knew you weren't supposed to take the coin. Even if you did ask, we wouldn't have said yes. Dad, I feel terrible. I don't even know where it could be. A part of me, part of me thinks about what my grandfather did. Maybe he did it right. What do you mean? What I mean is, look at our family. We got a great life. Things have been stressful the past year, yeah, but they all worked out. The other coins paid off the entire debt. <laughs> we were even able to put a good chunk of money back. We could be happy about that. Dad, I'll retrace my steps. I'll go back to the field and look for the coin. All right, you do that if you think it'll make you feel better. It's gonna be like looking for a needle in a haystack, but if you find it, great. If you don't, well, I guess that'll be okay too. What money did to our family before, 
Could have been us. Come on. Let's get back to work. Surprising ourselves. <laughs> Everyone in the town is so proud of that team, and I'm really proud of you. I can say we're having a good time right now. <laughs> hey, are we still going to your barbecue tonight? You bet. Unless you're too busy. Well, <laughs> just kidding. I've had a really great time seeing you. All of a sudden, my life seems like it's over. And then it seems like it couldn't get any better. It's funny. Very funny. I know exactly what you mean. I'll pick you up at six. Sounds good. <laughs> Gotta drop off the moving blankets at my Uncle Joe's, then I'll take you home. So soon? Oh, I thought we could hang out for a little while. Now, where are we going? We'll just take a shortcut through Brinker's farm and past their woods. It's clear now, but with all the rain this morning. That's gonna kill me. I just finished fixing the bakery truck and now I screwed up mine. I'll call him to come get us. Nice. Bones dead. Thank you. 
Good afternoon and welcome to the Ohio State Boys High School Baseball Championships here at beautiful Huntington Park in Columbus. In today's semifinal matchup, we have Gibsonburg taking on Jackson Center. I'm Tim McMahon, alongside me is Kent Merker and call it David Goliath, Cinderella Story, Sea Biscuit, whatever you want to call it, Gibsonburg, 12 and 17 on the season. The first team with a losing record to reach the state semifinals really shouldn't be here but they're taking on the undefeated Jackson Center, a legend in the state. And Kent, they have quite a tough task ahead of them today. Well, I'll tell you what amazes me is uh, just to look out on this field, not seeing them all year. I don't think David was that small. <laughs> I mean, a lot of these kids don't look like they're 135 pounds, but even more impressive to me is they've got six wins this year in the state tournament, which matches their season total up to this point. And even more importantly, if they look to continue that, they got a tough task ahead of them today. They got Josh Thompson throwing for Jackson Center. This kid's already committed to Ohio State on a scholarship. Good fastball, throws in the upper 80s to the low 90s. I hope they brought their slingshots today because they're going to need them. My nephew Kyle plays for Jackson Center. I hope they light that Gibson Berg team up. Yeah, they're definitely going to need it. Probably a little bit of luck too. Uh, Thompson, by the way, the third pitcher Gibson Berg has faced with a Division I scholarship. All right, the fans are ready. We're ready. Gibsonburg, Jackson Center just about to get underway. Here we are in the top of the fifth inning. It's a scoreless game right now, a pitching duel thus far. Alex Black on the mound for Gibsonburg, facing the other pitcher, Josh Thompson, who can do more than just throw the ball, Ken. Yeah, Thompson's definitely a dual threat. Definitely not someone you want to take light. Black better be careful. Runner on for Jackson Center. Here's a windup and the pitch. Ball hits the left center. A nice flare, nice double for Thompson. That's going to bring a runner around. Makes a score one to nothing, Jackson Center. Here we are in the bottom of the seventh inning. One to nothing, Jackson Center. Gibsonburg at the plate with two outs. Jackson Center, one out away from that state championship game. All right, who's up? Oh, oh. This guy can't pitch or hit his way out of a paper bag. But the Golden Bears threatening. Millison on second, Kaiser on first for Gibsonburg. And the pitcher, Alex Black, up to bat with a 3-1 count. That pitcher will strike Black out for sure. I've known Alex Black since he was little, and he's no good! A lot of commotion going down there. Hopefully everybody's all right. Yeah, I hope that one hit an empty seat. That ball was hit hard. He did that on purpose! I'm filing a police report. No, no, no! I'm done! But more importantly, the count's now full, Tim, and what that means is both runners are going to be going on the pitch. So if, if Black can find a, a gap here somewhere, that run should easily score for first base. Looks like we're one out for one home. Well, let's just wait and see what Alex can do. So here we are, bottom of the seventh, two outs, runners on first and second. Black up to bat. He's going to step out, check with his third base coach. A little bit of strategy perhaps here, Tim. Yeah, he might be trying to freeze the pitcher a little bit. All right, Black back up to the plate. Here's the windup and the pitch. A high fastball, and Black hits it a mile high. A pop-up right over his head should end the game. Well, that's a fair ball. He's got to be running. He's headed back to the dugout. Yeah, he's in disgusted, but the ball drops. It's a fair ball. And the throw to first is over the first oh base. Black is safe. All runners are safe. And Gibsonburg wins. This game is over. Two to one, the final. Unlike anything I've ever seen. I don't know about you, Ben. Well, I've seen a lot of baseball games. I have never seen anything like this here. Hey, Gibsonburg, anyone want to play in the state championship? Yeah! Alex Black, I don't know whether to chew you out or give you a hug. Oh, that crazy ass play just got us in the state championship. Man, I'm so proud of you. So proud. Let's grab something to eat, get a good night's rest, and get ready to play Fisher Catholic in the state championship tomorrow. Great job today, everyone. Great job. What are we doing here? Really? How does a team like us get to the state championship? You know, when you think about it, we're playing a lot better. But there's been a crazy fluke in every game we've won. I mean, Wyatt had not hit a home run in his whole life, and he hits two home runs against the best pitcher in the state. Come on. 
And then the weird breaks we had against Van Buren, Kaleida, and Edgerton. I know, I know. And then today, if Black wouldn't have confused everyone the way he threw down his bat, they would have caught the ball for sure. I mean, Jackson Center was one easy catch away from beating us. What's wrong, Race? These kids, they just never give up. They really believe we can do it. Do you think we'll win one more tomorrow? Just look at all the first year coaches. Like you, live one state with a six and 17 regular season record. Very funny. <laughs> hey, I'm out of here. I gotta get some sleep. All right, coach, get a good night rest. See you tomorrow. Welcome to the Ohio State Boys High School Baseball State Championship game and we have a good one for you today here at Huntington Park. Gibsonburg 13 and 17 on the season facing off against Lancaster Fisher Catholic with a 30 and 1 record. But back to Gibsonburg, they were run ruled seven times and went through a stretch this season where they lost 12 games in a row. How does this happen, Ken? How does a team like this get here? I don't think anybody knows that, including Gibsonburg. But I'll tell you this, we could be witnessing history today. And if Gibsonburg does find a way to win this game today, they will be the only team, not just in Ohio, but in any state, with a losing record to win a state championship. A remarkable feat if they could pull this off. And very shortly, we'll find out if Gibsonburg can replace that glass slipper with a crown. Well, so far, the state championship game certainly lived up to the height. Gibsonburg and Alex Black riding that momentum from the Jackson Center game, getting off to a hot start today. Yeah, and you just hope Black can keep it up. You know, he pitched seven innings just a day ago, so uh, he's running on fumes, and let's just see if he can continue. Fisher Catholic now has five runs after that bases loaded triple in the fifth. Down by two, tying run on first. State championship game, dude. There's no pressure or anything. <laughs> Here we are at the bottom of the seventh inning. One out, runners on first and third for Gibsonburg in this state championship game. Right now the score is Fisher Catholic five, Gibsonburg three. Wells on the mound for Fisher Catholic. He's been a beast all day, but he's got Andy Gruner coming up to the plate. Actually going to lay down oh, wow. the bun. We have a suicide squeeze happening right here. Millicent wow. safe at wow. home and Bruner safe at first. Off. I don't think that Fisher Catholic saw this one coming. 
I don't think anybody on earth saw that play coming in, and he mm -hmm. executed it perfectly. What a play. And Gibson Bird now within a run, 5-4, to four, Fisher Catholic leads. Winning run at first, Derek Hetrick at the plate. Hedrick makes contact, a deep fly ball. He's going to get to the gap in left center. Kaiser comes around for the score easily. Here comes Gruner, most likely being held up at third. No, he's being waved home. He's coming home. Here comes a throw, a perfect throw. Gruner's going to be out by a mile. about does it. You don't have to believe me, but now it's history. You know, I didn't play much all year, but I sure enjoyed the ride. This town is really special. So Andy, as captain of the team, I have something special for you. What? <laughs> no way, Henry. I can't accept this. You don't have a choice. Enjoy.
Hey, shit, Andy, you see that stop sign up ahead, though? Come on, slow this car down. No brakes! What? You gotta be kidding me! No Andy, man, we always seem to get some lucky breaks, don't we? I'll take the special, son. That'll be 25 cents, please. Nice job on that championship game there, fella. Thank you, sir. Hey, shortstop. We don't know how he did it, but it was a fun ride. Hey, that little filly is really cute. Yeah. Can I give you some advice, son? Yeah. I'd hang on to that one, if I were you. <laughs>